we've got our goodest buddy and my favorite interview to date. Yes, I will give you a big head. Uh, Jay Gavin Wild is back in the house here on Geek Pulse. Now, what you been up to since last time we talked? Dude, I've had my hands in so many cookie jars, man. A um, lot of stuff I'm doing right now, um, you know, especially considering the strike that's going on is, is uh, just independent. Um, working on that zombie thing, uh, Winter Wonder Zombie, uh, fucking apocalypse is what it's called. Sorry for the language. No, don't uh, apologize. Don't apologize. <laughs> I don't care what YouTube thinks. Exactly, right? Um God, let me think. Uh, I've been working on Primal Taste. Uh, we still want to do that. You know, that's just a matter of honestly funding at this point. Um, got a lot of great names attached to it. Uh, a lot of people that are willing to just, you know, give up their their time, uh, even even for free. Um, just a matter, of, you know, planning that out. Um, and then, yeah, like trying to branch more into the filmmaking world. Like I'm working on a music video for a friend. Um, oh shit. Yeah, um, the song is called Babylon. Um, I, I don't know how much I can say about it or, or not, but we're, we're just planning it right now. So it's, it's I guess you would say it's in post-production. Um, what type of music? What type of music is it? Uh, dude, it's a rap song. It's, you know, it's your total cliche, you know, rap song. Um, but, you know, we've come up with a few good ideas to make the video a little different than your average uh, rap video. Um, you know, something definitely more affordable and shootable, but, um, you know, also something that's not super cliche. Uh, I'm not that way. I want my stuff to be cool and unique and original, but it's definitely one of those songs that you can sort of guess what the music video is going to be like. Yeah. Popping bottles, popping caps. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. dude. <laughs> we're, not, <laughs> we're not straying too far away from that. Um, you know, but we, we did come up with a few cool ideas that, you know, will make it stand out, I think, a little bit. That's kind of cool. Let's talk about that a little bit. So, like, doing a music video is a shorter shoot, I would imagine. Absolutely. So, is it less prep time or more or about the same as far as getting the concept from concept to uh, to actually filming it? I would say it's absolutely uh, less prep time. You know, um, depending on, I would imagine, you know, this is my first music video, but I would imagine depending on the artist um, and the song also, uh, that can very much vary uh, with how long it takes. Um, this is definitely a music video that doesn't have a lot of story behind it. You know, it's your cliche rap song. Not that it's bad. It's just very much like a hype song, you know, so there's yeah. not, not a lot of story to put into that type of music video. Um, again, the song's great. Um, but you know, no need to, to give it like this really deep and meaningful story and think about like every shot composition wise, you know, it's just, you know, your, your standard, like you said, popping bottles and all that uh, type of video. Uh, so it's less Scorsese and more Michael Bay. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. You couldn't, you couldn't have put it better. Gotcha. Gotcha. That, that begs the question. So you, you're doing this for your friend. What, artists like some what's some of your musical influences who would you pick to do a music video for as far as an artist you like dude i'm a huge you know uh he, he's obviously passed now i'm a huge juice world fan oh gosh i like uh i like little peep um big fan of him dude uh dude. Let me think. um i like i like eminem um but i also like you know country too like i'm i'm I've got a wide variety of music tastes. I like Morgan Wallen. I like, um, goodness, ah, let me think. I'm trying to say some names that aren't too. Uh, I feel like if we live in the South, it's okay to like country and hip hop. Uh, yeah, dude, me too. I mean, and I don't know. I'm just like, music has always been a huge part of my family. Like, um, and I've just got a very versatile taste. Um, trying to think of some other artists that i really like like i like um lana del rey oh that's yeah yeah dude nirvana like um i've just my music taste is very very wide you know nerdy dustin if you could shoot a music video or direct a music video for somebody who would you pick uh oh elton john for sure oh shit yeah. do you guys have much fun you'd have <laughs> probably so much fun like, I, mine would probably have to be uh snoop dog it would be the the most easiest laid back snoop wouldn't he'd be like man just you know get a shot or two and i'm like all right i got you man so he wouldn't he wouldn't give a shit if i was like you know like if it looked good or not he's just like man just film me you know 
rapping my lyrics, rapping my song, and then that's it. Like you wouldn't, you could, you wouldn't like, have, he could just be chilling on a couch with Snoop, and as he's singing, and there's the video, and he'd be cool with that. He would be okay with that too. Yeah. Um, so you would basically not even shoot a music video. You would just get to hang out with Snoop Dogg all day. There's also a camera there. That's it. Yeah, it's just a camera there. Or you could be like little Dicky and go all out and make it a cartoon. Yes. <laughs> he like okay, so he's a perfect example of like you know how it depends on the artist. Little Dicky, like his music videos are normally like pretty awesome and pretty like well thought out. Um, but you know, with some artists, I mean, it's just kind of like, hey man, let's let's get some girls, let's get a car, let's get some money, and then just throw it in the air, and then boom, there you go. That's the whole video. Speaking uh, of Lil Dick, Lil Dicky has the best music video of all time. It's um, it's the one where he's making the song, um, where he can't spend money. Oh gosh, I can't think of the name of the song now. I don't remember. But yeah, he goes through the entire the entire music video is him shooting the rap video, but asking people if he can like, can I borrow your house? Can I borrow your, uh, you know, your car? And it's it's hilarious. It's amazing. I love it. I love him. I'll have to give that a watch. I don't think I've ever seen yeah, that. that. That's good. That's to say the greatest music video is 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 high well, praise too. I mean, the music the greatest music video of all time is probably Thriller. I mean, like for being real. <laughs> I mean, just yeah, I was gonna say because of the budget, who it was. Uh, yeah, that'll always be the greatest music video of all time. I want to get to the point where I'm doing some stuff like, um, uh, Khalid and, um, then it's Billie Eilish. Uh, what, God, what was the song they did to get lovely? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. that music video was awesome. Um, and the, the visual effects in that were just, I mean, they were crazy. I remember watching a breakdown of it and I was like, oh man, that's just, that's genius. And it's almost a lost art. It's yeah. insane, like, how it's not even a thing. Like, even 20 years ago, 10 years ago. So the fact that you're doing this and you're so passionate about music videos, man, is just so fucking cool. Dude, no, I, you are 100% right. It is very much a, a lost art, which is why I am really excited about getting into it. And I'm really confident about getting into it. Like, I know that if I put, you know, 50% of, of, you know, what I would do for a film into it, um, it's going to be you know, not the toot my horn, but it's going to be better than most music videos because a lot yeah. of music videos nowadays are just, like I said, let's get a cool car, you know, let's get some money, let's get some drinks, and then boom, that's our whole video. It's like there's no thought into it. Uh, Made on the super cheap, shot cheap. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, um, I, I try to put more time in, into my stuff than that. Now, this one specifically for Babylon, again, because of the song, it's probably going to lean more towards yes that cliche you know money cars girls but I, I still think we have uh some good ideas and things that will look good and be different than the average music video and if you can just elevate it you got the average music video and you bring your skill to elevate it to the next level then you've done your job 100 percent, absolutely sweet be on the lookout for that babylon what's the yeah. name of the band yeah man i think it's going to be played um at Rolling Loud, I think, um, which is why they're kind of eager about, um, you know, getting getting something shot for it. Um, I'm working on the cover for that song right now, like the just the photo of it. Um, anyway, but yeah, dude, I'm really excited about it. We're just kind of thinking it through and, and planning on it. Damn, you've, you've diversified. I have, dude. Here's the thing, man. Like, I got to start, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 19 now. I got to start looking after myself financially because, you know, acting, I'm not always employed with, with being an actor. Right. Uh, you know, I, I've got, you know, just a regular side job now, but um, I don't want to really do that forever. I would like to, you know, I'd like to do what I love and, and to make money um, doing it, you know, to support myself. So um, I was like, you know, like, this is a good way to be, to still film. Um, you know, but make money while doing it. That's great. It's wild to think when I was 19, I was not thinking like that at all. <laughs> what were you thinking with? I mean, at 19, I was, I was assistant managing a movie theater and I just wanted to get drunk all the time. And there you right, go. Like, yeah. I didn't think about a career. I didn't think about anything. It was, I was doing my, like, even in school, I was in college just doing my generals. Like, I didn't have a career marked out. I didn't, like, I knew I eventually wanted to do something in film, you know, but I didn't really know, like, 
Did I want to act, direct, produce? Nice. I just wanted to drink. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a specific guild for that. It's called AA. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but hot, hot, hot topic button, real quick. Pro writer strike or not pro writer strike or somewhere in between. I'm gonna say I'll, I'll break the ice. I'm pro writer strike. All right. I wish I knew more about this. Uh, this specific uh, topic, like I really, and, and I feel it, you know, I feel like I should, um, you know, because I'm in the industry and it impacts me. Um, but dude, I've been so darn busy. I haven't I had time to, to read up on it. I'm assuming if anybody within the industry, you know, is striking and there's this much, uh, you know, of a, if there's this much support for it, I assume it's for good reason. Um, you know, and writers, writers are really important. I, writers, I don't think get nearly as much credit as they deserve. I mean, um, they're the ones who write the material. I mean, it's without them, there would be nothing. Um, so I don't know an awful lot about it, but I imagine if they're going on strike, it's for good reason. And, um, when I read up more about it, I, I can, I can foresee me agreeing with it. In yeah. a nutshell, they just want to be paid what they're worth, and they don't want AI to take their jobs. I, That's literally that. It. Yep. It's so weird you say that, too. I got into a conversation um, about AI with a friend of mine, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's it's scary, dude. And uh, yeah, if that's really what it's about, then absolutely. I, I yeah. agree. Hard. Absolutely. There's legitimately a stipulation, like he was saying, is that, hey, what you got? What kind of, what kind of ghost you got, brother? Dude. <laughs> And, oh, nice. I love that flavor. Dude, me too. Me too. Um, not a sponsor, YouTube, but hey, Ghost, hit us up, bro. Me up. No, 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 no. You can hit them up, but hit me up first. That's right. All I want uh, is you know, like a free lifetime supply. It's not. I'm not asking for much. That's not much. Free lifetime supply? I'd like a shirt and a hat, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me a shirt and a hat. That'd be great. Yeah. But yeah, that's what the thing is. So they, they, the the writers don't want like the let's say you come up with a badass idea, just like the idea for the music video. They don't want that once that idea is on the table that the studio or whoever would take AI and then write from that. Oh no, yeah, yeah. No. no, that's 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 not cool, man. But, you know, you are <sighs> part of what makes um, I think writers you know unique is the struggle of being human. Um, know it is how long can you sit you know pondering for hours and hours and hours um you know at a time like can are, are you the type of writer that can withstand that you know and get to a point where you uh go over that hurdle you know or are you going to give up it's like that is what makes or breaks you i i would assume as a as a good writer or not and with the introduction of ai i mean that's just lazy you uh yeah no i don't agree with that that's one of our favorite TV shows wouldn't be half as fucking good, and that's The Righteous Gemstones, if some robot fucking wrote that shit. That's right. That's right. That is true. That segue. is very true. That is, segue. That is a segue, right? That's very true. Uh, <laughs> well, pretty- also, you know, what makes that show good is, is the directors who allow the amount of improv that it was allowed to stay in that show. I love it. Love it. Robots can't improv. Exactly. Dude, robots can't improv, and, and robots don't understand these characters to the degree that uh, David, Danny, um, and, and Jody, and, and um, you know, all the writers do. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, like, they can get close, but not close enough for it to be what it is. Oh. So that brings us to, you know, a topic, of course, Absolutely. So the eyeballs and the ear holes that may be watching this, uh, and based on the title and the thumbnail, <laughs> uh, of course, you have had the opportunity to be in all three current seasons of The Righteous Gemstones. Okay. Now, people watching, they've probably seen season one, they've probably seen season two. You cannot talk about season three. There's NDAs in the thing. Um, however, since you've been on all three and you've grown into quite the 19-year-old man, what is there anything that differs from your time on season three from the previous seasons overall, is it a feeling? Is it like, I can, I'll speak onto something in a, in a minute that won't get me in trouble that might get you in trouble, but it's not a spoiler, but 
um, what what would you say would be a difference this season for you? And uh, dude, I, I'll tell you what. Um, I, I think I'm allowed to say this season is uh, very very much um, a lot more active. Um, yeah. Be seeing um, you know us going out and and doing things you know physical things um, and you know a lot of those physical things were uh, were challenging and required you know uh, people to teach us and um, you know uh, so yeah like this season will absolutely be more physical um, last season it was Christmas episode so we were kind of you know it was relaxed we were all just kind of sitting in the house you know <laughs> this is. Uh, you'll definitely be taking on more of a wild ride with this season. Um, and yeah, like season three, man, I tell you, I had to do some things that, that were crazy. Um, and you know, you'll get to see it. Some things that were sprung up last minute. Um, it is so very much different than the previous two seasons. Um, I think mainly because of the challenges, uh, that we all as a cast, uh, faced while while shooting but they're they were great challenges. they were good challenges and they were challenges that are going to make this this particular season just so awesome i can't wait for it now i got the opportunity to share again some screen time with you and i think that at least the scene i saw so the flashbacks in the previous seasons definitely drove the story but the flashbacks in season three is a really huge narrative driver of what happens overall. And the driver is like, when you guys watch this later, I think driver and drive, those are the words that need to be picked up on. Maybe monster, um, you know, if you've done bad things in your life, you sometimes blank them. And you, But anyway, so that's enough like teasing and stuff. But like what I saw, I was like, oh shit. So this is really, all right. So this is really driving the story forward. So I fucking loved it. It was so good. Even Dude. like as much fun as you're having, you have more fun than me. I'm Come on, you do. All right. But in the audience, I'm like, oh my God, there was one point and I've never experienced this ever before where I, I wasn't even acting anymore. I was just watching some shit. I was yeah. watching shit happen. I'm like, and it was just genuine reactions. I didn't fake that shit at all. Dude, I mean, you're you're preaching to the choir. I mean, there were times where I mean, I was not acting like I was just in the moment and living in it. And there was no need, you know, for me to amplify anything. I mean, it just was all real and natural. Um, I would have paid to see what I saw. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You would have paid an art. You would have come out of your pockets. Uh, you would have burned a hole in your wallet. Absolutely. Absolutely. hundred percent. No money left. hundred percent. joy. Um, it's all gone, dude. What you got? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I know what they're talking about. I unfortunately did not end up on season three. Uh, if, if, if if certain somebody's watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I didn't end up on season three because I refused to shave my beard. <laughs> oh, was that really why? Oh, man. What's what's weird is heavy in the first part of the season they wanted all shaved people so I actually was in the show clean shaven and a beard so yeah so okay so yeah right away uh, I was scheduled to be on the the show mm -hmm. and I was told I had to shave and it's not the first time I've turned work down because of something like that right um so I said no and then she, then certain casting director was like. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> it was like, we're not, uh, the rest of the season is clean shaved, right? Like, we're not having any beards for the season. So uh, then I didn't look at notices anymore. I didn't look at emails. I didn't, and then come to find out she needed or he needed people at the end of the season for beards, but I was already doing something else. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, and that's not this. So, one of the very first, um, acting jobs I ever got I turned it down because I had to gain weight and so it's not I don't know like I'm acting isn't my passion in life so I can still turn stuff down but I'm not I don't know I don't like having to change myself physically <laughs> for something so yeah. but um I'm more on the directing and writing side so I'm fine but uh the scenes they're talking about though 
damn, I really did want to be in those. <laughs> oh, and I'm telling you, I, I, I don't mean to rub it in, but you missed out. I, oh, I know I did. I, I, so, so many people juicy. told me. I even drove by set and saw some of the stuff, and I, yeah, I, I definitely regret it. I do. My face doesn't regret it. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. I <laughs> shaved my beard, my head. Yeah, my no balls. one. Yeah, no one. I'll yeah. throw my pecker out there. It doesn't yeah. matter. Put me on. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much how I feel. I mean, like whatever they need me to do, I, uh, I'm willing to do it. What's up, Evan? Hey, from West Ashley, boy, West Ashley. Oh, West Ashley, nice man. Wesley Ashley River beards are a huge deal to those of us who need them. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Hair grows back, guys. Exactly. Hey, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Well, the problem is. It's the two months <laughs> that it takes me to grow this back. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I don't have the testosterone to just sneeze and grow a beard. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, unrelated, related, because you said you did a lot of physical stuff. Bro, you're looking like, you're looking lean. You've been working out? Thank you, man. Absolutely. I have. Um, I lost, uh, I say I lost 20 pounds. Shit. Nice. Yeah, dude. I um, And what's crazy is it, it, this isn't the first time that this happened. So during season two, my mom got to work on um, do wardrobe and mm -hmm. we were done shooting. You know, we had to stay because she was working. Uh, so we basically lived in the hotel for like six months, dude. Um, and oh, maybe it was like maybe it was like four. But anyway. Sure. Um, you know, because I didn't have a lot to do. Like after we got done shooting, um, I was in the worst shape of my life. I was, I was super chunky and I had nothing to do other than just go to the gym. Um, so I lost 20 pounds in. I got pretty, pretty lean. Like I am now, um, uh, put the weight back on, you know, and, and that was what season three is now, which thank God, because you know, it, it worked. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, after season three, I just, uh, I was like, man, I need to lose some weight. I need to get in better shape. And I just started hitting the gym and um, eating eating right. That that was a big thing that, that helped. Um, and yeah, man, I lost, uh, I, I used to be close to 200 pounds. I am now 170. Fuck um, yeah, brother. So yeah. I heard the train go by earlier. And then I'm looking at your fucking square jaw. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm, in my mind, L train. And then L train means like New York. I'm like, that's fucking Spider-Man. No, no, no. Dude, You're Spider-Man. We are in the middle of nowhere. This train, I don't know why, um, but this train likes to go by, I would say, at least every 25 to 30 minutes. And it's uh, it's gotten to a point, man, where I don't wake up anymore. As loud as it is, <laughs> or it's just my brain's used to it. Shit, yeah. Shit, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Well, go. that's uh, Jim. Okay, so we were talking about this earlier off camera. So as some of you know, it got announced here recently that there is going to be a Black Phone 2. So we were talking about it. Ooh, Mama Wild in here. That's right, Mama What's Wild. What's up? What's up? So would you want Moose to be the main killer in the next Black Phone? How awesome would that be? I have heard that, I have heard that theory. And... Would I want him to be a killer? I mean, everybody already hates Moose as it is, dude. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to take on any more, uh, any more heat as as Moose. Of course, I will. I will do whatever. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if he. You know, that's a wild theory. I don't know how that would work. But I'm down for whatever, dude. They've already. They've kind of already laid the groundwork for for moose to 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 come back and i think be a villain i hope so man it can I, be very like it like you know the in the movie it and the story the um the bull the kids bully when they're adults comes back and uh spoiler alert uh tries to kill them so it could happen yeah dude i, I came up with an idea not too long ago i think it was uh oops sorry um i an idea that was something along the lines of um, Moose uh, getting like sort of redeemed. Like we would we would dig into his personal life more, not defending his actions, but we would find out like, OK, for instance, um, you know, with uh, uh, Gwen, like, you know, she had a horrible at home life. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe I think it would be really cool to see like what Moose's at home life would be like uh, as a explanation for the way that he behaves. Um, I would really love to dig into that more. And, you know, 
happens to Moose? Like he's he's the same age as all the other kids, but he didn't get snagged. Like, does that ever happen? You know, can we see a scene or two where I'm, you know, I'm locked up uh, and I'm in the basement? Like, Ooh. would he get out? Is he tough enough to get out? You know? Um, see, that's the driving force of the second movie. I think yeah. that you're, you're hitting on it right there. Dude, I would... I, Love it, man. I would I would absolutely love it. Maybe he dies a hero's death, too. Maybe that's he... Right. That's absolutely right. Um, you know, maybe we could uh, see a little bit more... I Oh, oh this was my idea. Um, Scott Derrickson, I hope you're watching. Uh, We're going to send it to him. We're going to send it to him. Please do. Um, I was thinking, like, okay, we don't get to see uh, what Robin's experience looked like. Um, you know, we just see the aftermath. Him yep. being, you know, what if him and Robin uh, were uh, captured together? And, you know, they ended up having to come together to, to try to escape. Um, you know, enemies turn friends. Brilliant. I love that. Yeah. That's good. Because, like, like, I love Mikey. Um, and uh, to get to work with him again would be, you know, super awesome. And, you know, hopefully Moose could redeem himself so people, you know, don't uh, give me so much so much heat for it. I'm sure you so do get awesome. a lot of heat. So horror has, you know, what I mean? All oh, like people just poking at me and giving me a hard time, but it does hurt me a little bit. I'm like, guys, I'm a, I'm a really good person, I promise. So the horror genre, it's always been big, but it's getting a resurgence here in the past couple of years. What is a horror franchise that you think you would want to go into next that you haven't already? Because you're already a, you're part of the Halloween family, you know, you're part of the Black Phone family. What what's another horror genre you think you could see yourself in? Man, um, you know, if Scott Derrickson ever did another Sinister movie. I would love to be part of that. Ooh, Those yeah. scared the living crap out of me. Um, yeah, I would say that's one. Um, let me think. Maybe part of the Freddy Krueger series. Like, I would love for them to um, bring that back up. Um, I know that they are working on. Now, I wasn't. A, I, I didn't get super big into the game or the franchise. But I think it would be cool to be a part of Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, Damn yes. straight. That movie's going to blow up, by the Dude, way. Oh, man. It's going to be huge. David Gordon Green didn't give you the call for The Exorcist? Dude, I, still waiting on it, man. Still waiting on That's it. It's a trilogy. So That's maybe right. Maybe there's time. I could see you in the Chucky show. Yep. Yeah. That, yeah I, see, I see you fitting in there. I could see you in the Scream universe. Oh, <laughs> In the Scream universe, Scream yeah, H. Yeah, that actually, yeah. absolutely. I, I could not to, again. I know this might sound cocky, but I could I could see myself in that. Like with uh, with Chucky, I don't know. No, I mean I guess with Chucky, the way that they modernized it, um, I could definitely fit into that. Um, but Chucky is something I'm much more familiar with. I grew up watching that with my cousins and. Um, I would say my definite answer would probably be that, just because I'm so such a big fan of them. And the way your hair looks, and the way you look, you kind of resemble like a, a young Zach Galligan. So if you're his son in a new Gremlins movie, oh dude, I got to work with him. I was about to say, I was like, man, that name sounds familiar. He's he's a pretty cool dude. Yeah, what's yeah. the name? Uh, what's it? I put it in the thumbnail. What's the name of that movie? You were Bad, Bad Candy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I can see that. Doesn't he look like a, like the the main dude like from Gremlins One, like yeah. the first Gremlins? Yeah, you could play like that dude's son in Gremlins. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, like make a you know have a. That would be a really good idea. Anything? The thunder cuts his voice out. Call Zach. We'll call Zach. Uh -huh. That's so right. uh, yeah. So what uh, what sort of media you're into on on the streaming services now? What 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 are you diving into? What are you binging? Dude, nothing, man, nothing. I'm such a, it's funny, man. Like, I'm so unfamiliar with everything that is out right now. Um, like, you would think I'm an actor. I watch a lot of movies. I watch a lot of shows. I really don't. I'm so out of the loop with things right now. Um, I guess it's because I'm trying to, like, make my own stuff. And every time, every time I watch something, and if it's remotely good, I get on to myself, and I'm like, Gavin, why aren't you making something like that? You know what I mean? So I'll, I'll pause the movie and then just like go start writing or something like that. So I never finished anything either. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we, uh, we were talking a little bit beforehand and we kind of skipped over a little bit. So 
Where's the trailer for the Righteous Gemstones season three? Where's that trailer at, man? Dude, I'm waiting on it, man. I'm waiting on it. <laughs> but it could premiere where? In Austin, Texas on June 3rd. And uh, to my knowledge, I will be there. And uh, I cannot wait, man. I'm so freaking excited. Like, it's uh, it's just going to be awesome. I'm so A lot of firsts for you, right? Right. Never been on a plane. So, you know, first time being on a plane. Um, that's that's not looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to it, but then not looking forward to it. You know what I mean? Um, the free peanuts are good. The free snacks make you feel like a baller. Even right. if you're like coach. Yep. Yep. I've heard you know, the peanuts can sometimes make up for the turbulence. Um, I don't believe it. I think I'm going to be, you know, uh, shitting my pants a little bit the whole time. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Just write, write, write the whole time. Take your mind off of it. Take That's the whole time to write. Or catch up on TV. Yeah, or watch a movie. <laughs> and chew gum. Don't forget, chew gum. Your chew ears, gum. Why is that important? Your ears are going to pop. <laughs> you need, oh, okay. you need to be chewing gum when you're that high up. Yeah, yeah the uh, the pressure is going to fuck your eardrums up. Oh, I got you. I got you. I They're can't believe nobody told you to chew gum. No, dude. Nobody's told me everything. Everything in my life I've just had to experience for myself and just, you know. So if you're that high up, your ears will start to pop due to the pressure and it's it it's dumb. Sometimes but, you can clear it by like, you know, more like this or yawning, but get yeah. some gum. Okay. All right. Note to self, get some gum. I'll do that. And if you're flying with your mama, have her, you know, have her get some gum or like a little airplane bottle, just a little something to sort of like Calm the nerves. My mama's always got me covered. She's got me. Always. Always. <laughs> so what's that What's that whole thing like? Like, um, have you been briefed on it about, so once you get to Austin, are you doing press? Are you doing this? You, what? What's the event like? Oh, my robot speaker started talking to me. Sorry, y'all. Fucking oh, ghosts. Let, let me off. turn her off. Um, so I have not, man. I, I uh, you know, all I know is that they are, you know, obviously showcasing the the first episode. Um, no, man, we we we're just going, we're just going to have fun and, and to see it. And uh, you know, whatever happens, happens. Hopefully, you know, it would be really cool if they brought us up on stage. I don't know if they would do that. Um, you know, they 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 usually do. You might be on stage, bro, in Austin, Texas. <sighs> I hope so, man. I do hope you know so. who else is gonna come? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like uh, they said, uh, Adam Devine, right? Uh, Edie Patterson, John Goodman. Um, uh, David's going to be there, right? Yeah, I heard that. Uh, is Emma coming? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, she is. Yep. Can we talk about Emma right now? And how Bro, dude. Yeah. Killing it. We can. She is dude. murdering the, the film and TV scene right now, dude. Dude. Why'd y'all hit the floor when I was watching the Rise of the Pink Ladies? I had no idea she was Rizzo. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh man, I tell you, that was a big secret. Like, she was so nervous about telling anyone. <laughs> and uh I don't blame her. I mean, but yeah, dude, it was it was funny. I think she almost wasn't gonna tell me. And she pretty much tells me everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, it, like everything that she has right now she wholeheartedly deserves yes she is such a hard-working actor like in the beginning of my career me and my mom were both kind of like psycho like we would we were such perfectionists you know as we've gotten you know more used to things and and, and learned more you know we're far less uh crazy about being a perfectionist but emma still has that drive to be a perfectionist and to like give it her Ten thousand percent every time. I don't know where she gets it. I don't know what she drinks or eats to give her that. Uh, she needs to give me some, you know. But like I'm telling you, every bit of success she has gotten, um, it's just great to see because it's like she deserves it, you know. Well, as friendly as you guys are, like off screen and on screen, you should write like something like a, a vehicle for the two of y'all together. Dude, we have. We we uh season two, man, we stayed up until like five in the morning writing something. Nice. We, oh man, we didn't even know it was five in the morning. I, I it's you know, it's it's been a while, so I, I'm not hundred percent sure what the plot was, but it was uh I think it was gonna be a horror. Um it was gonna be, I think, uh in the eighties, based in the eighties. Um I don't remember if we were gonna be brother or sister. Um I'm not sure, but 
it was really good. Like we got a lot of work done and, you know, we both gotten so busy that projects just kind of been swept under the rug, but we did, we started working on something for a minute. Hell yeah. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah. Y'all are, are well, gemstones. You guys are great together. The way you play off of one another is so great. I love Dude, it. It's, it's so easy. Like when you have an actress that is just good and experienced, like you don't have to uh, push anything out of her. Like, she is going to give you something to feed off of. And that is such a big help um, in acting. Like it, it allows you to not focus so much on, you know, your delivery because you're confident that you're going to be able to feed off of what she gives you in the moment. And it's going to be the correct response and the you know correct uh, delivery. You don't have to have anything that is just set in stone. So it can change every time too. Um, That's well said. I like that's that. That's shit. true. Yeah. So, you know, she's hadn't sung, but she's on a musical show. And the two of y'all are kind of on a musical show. Um, how would you, would you shit your pants if for like next season? They're like, hey, we need you to do a full song and dance number. Dude, they've asked me this season to do more than that. Like, <laughs> so, uh, no. I mean, <laughs> that would be the least. Dude, if David, if David, like, and and I say if David called me, he wouldn't. That here's <laughs> how David works. He just springs it on you last minute. Um, and I think he did that purposely because I think he knows I'm a bit of a worry wart. I'll mm -hmm. sit, I'll think about it, and I'll stew on it. Um, so if he just kind of throws it on me, he knows I work good under pressure. Um, yeah. And and that's why he's so genius. I think he picks up on things like that. Um, but yeah, no, dude, I've had to do so much worse in this season, like. If he called me and told me that, or, or told me, you know, he, he wanted me to do that, I would, I'd, I'd thank him. I'd be like, thank you, David. Yes, <laughs> something normal. Thank, thank you. This is what you want me to. Are you sh awesome? Great. <laughs> sure. Nice. Nice. That's good. You think you would uh, be able to carry the tune? How, how, rate your sing, rate your singing skills on a scale of one to ten. Honestly, I'm actually. I've been told that I'm not a bad singer, but okay. here's. You know, you have to consider, is Jesse Jonestown a good singer? Is, no. is he the one to carry a tune? Is he the one to care about carrying the tune? No. Um, and sometimes it's a funny balance. Like, you uh, you want to show off your skill um, as an individual, but then you're like, oh, yeah, I'm Jesse Jonestown. Like, this guy is not good at singing. No, no. So, And I think that's another reason why I'm not so worried about it. It's like, because I can purposely suck. And everybody will either think I'm acting very well, um, you know, regardless. Like, they'll just be like, oh, man. Like, Look at him. It. it turns out I just suck at singing. Um, <laughs> you know, That's good. That's good. That's a good way to analyze that. That's not yeah. like if I you're... don't be good at anything. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, it's built into the character, boy. Exactly. I just... Every time somebody's like, you did a great job. I'm like, yeah, I just really suck at what they asked me to do. So <laughs> works out good. <laughs> it does. It really does. I don't know that I've ever heard Danny sing. Danny's a great singer. Is he really? Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know that I've heard him sing. Yeah. Well, John's a great singer, too. John, John yeah. John Goodman's got a beautiful voice. Yeah. John will, you know, just start start singing in the middle uh, of a, uh, um, or in between takes. It's It's awesome. Dude, well, he, he <laughs> the first time I met John, he did that. We were coming inside. It was me, Gregory, and two other people, and we were all bullshitting. And then John like left to go to his room, and he was literally singing to himself the whole time he was walking away. And I was like, "That's that's a thing he does." So like days later, I talked to one of his friends, John's friends, Mark Christopher Lawrence, and apparently John's been doing that since the eighties. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I mean, like, I'll tell you something about John. You know, he he did something on the uh, the day that you were there, Noah. Um, mm -hmm. He delivered a line, um, and at first, you know, I was uh, I was just confused as to why he delivered it in that way. I just was listening to him, and I was like, hmm, like, this isn't extremely fitting to that line. But I gave it a few more listens, and I realized. This guy's a genius. The way he was delivering it was actually so perfect. And so, I mean, it was so obvious that, that John, it's just so obvious that John understands um, who Eli is. 
And oh my god, it's it's in the first episode. I cannot wait for you guys to hear it. Like the way he delivers it, I don't think if I sat for hours and hours and hours would have thought to deliver it in this way. Oh. Yeah, dude. Like, and it's nothing crazy. It's just like something that is is subtle but makes such a huge difference. And I was like, wow. I mean, that right then and there. I mean, was just a perfect in person example to me um, of of how amazing John is. You know, not that I I didn't think he was amazing before. Of course, he's John Goodman. But to see it live in action, um, and for me to just it to go right over my head uh made that hit even harder you know what i mean that's cool yeah that's and to pick up on that even spending all the time you spent with him in the previous season so you're still learning and still growing as an actor as a person from you know a mentor figure that's that's fucking dope i can't wait so that's going to be the first episode first episode yeah and uh as soon as it comes out remind me and i'll I'll just let you know i want to know yeah i want to know and I, I don't know, I mean, it, it's it's not like this, you know, powerful, uh, you know, performance where he sheds a tear or anything like that. So it, it might not even be noticeable to you. But it was something that, you know, like I said at first, I was like, hmm, that's an interesting way to deliver that line. I was like, I don't know if I would do it like that. Um, but then I listened more and more and I'm like, I'm an idiot. Like, that is so perfect. Like, it was just so obvious that he understood his character. And again, when it comes out, I'll I'll let you know. But yeah, for real, it was just something that struck me personally. For me, with him, he's such a big guy, physically, and in is like you know delivery and who he is. I love his small moments. When someone is that big and outgoing, when they go small or they do something like that, that impresses me more than you know going going hard with tears stuff like that. So the small. Yeah, yeah. It was a. It was a beautiful performance of a very small and and not very important line um and yeah like that that's the best way to explain it so you know it might not be noticeable to everybody but it it was to me because you know just as an actor I'm, i'm always looking for the best way to perform every line um so yeah i just remember hearing it and going huh that's a little weird at first and i was like kevin you're an idiot that is so perfect wow um so it was very cool Oh yeah. Yeah. John gets a lot of experience delivering those little moments on the Connors. It's like the best part of that show is when he steps in and he just gives like three lines and it's just like, Whoa, (laughs) do that. You only had three lines and they're not the words that are coming out of your mouth. Aren't extremely impactful, but you made them impactful. Um, He was able to deliver yabba dabba do. And I believed it. uh, Yeah, dude. I mean, I almost shed a tear when I heard that. Like, right? oh, dude, yeah. he should have won an Oscar for just That's that. Great. I'm gonna tell him next time. Oh, definitely, definitely. He's and he's the type of guy that will that will you know listen to you. I remember uh, we were we were shooting, and um, it was uh, <laughs> a few days after his birthday, and you know after we were done, uh, I was like, hey, John, like, uh, um, I meant to tell you happy belated birthday, and, and he was like, thank you, and he gave me a fist bump. Like, he's a Super cool dude, man. Sweet. What a- yeah. You know, I mean, you would think like John Goodman, A-lister, like there's this idea in everybody's head that, you know, the bigger they are, the meaner they are and the scarier they are. And I've found that it's totally the opposite. It's it's the C-listers, bro, who like walk around like they own a plane. Yeah. Um, yep. Crazy. 1000%. <laughs> I won't I won't say this person's name he or she but there was uh, I had seen later in um semi famous comedian and that person said some shit that wrung rubbed me the wrong way I'm like come right. on. I'm not going to say who it is. Yeah. Comedian lady um but uh yes yeah, we we're just doing a scene and just some of the stuff the complaining and stuff she was doing I'm like you know what? Yeah, it is hot. And we're all sitting out here and you get to leave set more than anyone else. Um, you know, just don't just think it, think it internally. Don't say it about like a, around a bunch of day player, you know, about a bunch of extras. <laughs> just keep that shit to yourself. That's all I want. I get it. We're all in the same situation, but maybe just don't be like a prima donna. About it. I, I hear you. Yeah. Um, I, I, I totally get you. I already know who you're talking about just because that's her reputation. 
<laughs> deserved it. I'm not talking about the lady from Third Rock from the Sun. That's not who I'm talking about. <laughs> I really don't know who you're talking about, but I'll I'll message you afterwards and let you know. I'm not gonna blow her up, explore her spot. Yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> um, so, will there be a season four? Dude, um, I mean, you know, officially, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I'm sure, man. I, I'm sure they're they're planning on going, you know, to the moon with this show. And you and you'd probably say yes to every single opportunity, right? Oh, dude. I mean, yeah, man. Like, I just, I love being on set. It is my happy place. It is where I'm most confident. It's where I'm, you know, just filled with joy. Um, so yeah, the, every opportunity I get, I mean, unless it's just something like totally out of my wheelhouse, like I'm going to do it. Nice. hundred percent. Being on set is, I miss it. I haven't been on set in over a year. I know, <laughs> dude. Oh, I I'm missed getting, it. Uh, I'm getting, um, this, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, set sick, you know, just like I'm, I'm, I want to be, it's such a magical feeling. I don't know what it is. If you could write personally for a character, of obviously that's not, not even Jesse, mm -hmm. who would it be? Like it'd be an episode that was centered around the, this character. Who would you choose to write for? And either, either baby Billy. Or Judy. Yes. But again, I don't know if I could do Judy justice. You um, could, man, you could. No, so, like I, I, I think I could give her something you know, that's, that's worth watching. But, um, I think baby Billy, there's so much more to him. Um, and he's just so entertaining. And, and that's another actor that blew me away. Um, Walton, particularly with his dedication, um, you know, he's very much like, I, I think he's method, but he's not like that crazy method. He's not okay. like, don't approach me, you know, don't talk to me. He's a very awesome guy. His dedication to staying in it and staying with it is nuts. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. Um, so, like, yeah, I would just like to work with him more and, you know, watch what he does. Like, I would write specifically so I could just watch it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's a great one. What about you? No, I definitely I, – uh, yeah, Baby Billy. I think him and Tiffany uh, and Tiffany should have a show. Like, they uh, – yeah. Uh, yeah. That'd be pretty funny, that little – Little um, baby Billy and Tiffany spinoff. Yeah, Va Valen Hall is another one. She surprises me. She's such a great actress. Like, just the little bit of stuff she has just kills it. Oh, dude, I know it's it's uh, it's crazy. It's like um, her ability to <laughs> to do so much um, with like part of what makes her characters is she doesn't like have you know a crazy amount of dialogue. And she just kills it. She makes her character so memorable. Everybody knows Aunt Tiffany. Like, she's another one that um, it's the way she delivers things. You know what I mean? Like it's the way she acts, like her physical comedy. Uh huh. It's just like when she's in the tree. <laughs> like, Dude, that's oh my god, that was awesome. So great. I feel like I wasn't there for that, but I feel like that was improv. I feel like she was just like, you know, it might be funnier and more my character if I'm just up in the tree. <laughs> Dude, it would not surprise me. Like, David David will come up, and, I mean, he'll just, like, give ideas. He's just like, I think it would be cool if, like... I mean, it's that, to me, if I were to, you know... If I were to uh, reenact that moment, you know, she's sitting over there, and David's just behind the monitor. He comes behind the monitor, and he's like, so, um, wouldn't it be funny if you were in the tree? And... Like he'll he'll just say it like that. Like it won't Not be say, get in the tree. He's yeah. gonna say that's your idea. You know what? Yeah, you know, right, right. Like like he's like I'm kind of thinking like it'd be funny if you were in the tree. And uh, the next take, you're just in the tree. And um, you know, sometimes it might not make sense to you at the at the time, but like when it comes out, you're like, oh, I see what he was going for there this whole time. And he may have just thought of it on the fly. Oh, dude, crazy! Yeah, that's that's how his brain has to work. I, Either that or it's all <sighs> planned. I can't tell the difference. It seems all intentional and all planned because of how genius it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But just be that good on the fly. You know, doing it for, for so long, like, 
you know, but, but yeah, that's the thing about him. Everything feels intentional. Um, so I always trust him. I'm always like, I know this is going to be funny. For sure. I want to give a shout out to Salem. Do you know a Salem? Hello, oh, Collins. Yes, sir. All right. Salem's like, yo, that's my best friend. That's right. Right on. What's up, Salem? How's it going? Uh, for me, I think if I had to choose, it'd be Keith. And it would just be a day in the life. Legitimately a whole, you know, some of my favorite episodes of TV shows are like, it's not even narrative based. They take one, one character, one episode and just take a revolve around them. What's Keith doing for a whole day? The whole. Wait, I can see him getting stuck in a, in a, um, in a baby swing set. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Like eating his ice cream. And he's just like trying to get out, you know. Just, Hello, can someone help? And he's just quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he does get out, and then he's going like he's got to get to somewhere. And then what? legitimately, they give him so much shit at the very last when he finally gathers up. They have no idea or give two shits of what his day has been like. They're just like, "You're late. You should have been here." Exactly. That's what I, I would. Lo- I just love Tony so much, man. He would, you know, he would be in a like. I mean, the, the craziest things would have happened right before the most nonchalant scenes. It's like, you know, he's just hanging out with, uh, um, I don't know, whoever. And uh, it'd be funny to see what he was doing out like before that. And turns out what he was doing before that was like, you know, he was in a high speed chase or something like yeah. that. He wasn't driving passenger seat. And, you know, then we cut to him just being Keith and being weird and being. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. He would- <laughs> Weirdest, but dumbest, like comedically previous scenes to any to any scene that we see. You know what I mean? Brilliant. I I would love that so much. And he would Tony would just eat it up. He'd eat that shit up. Absolutely. Uh, and and Tony's a great dude. I I was so happy I got to meet him. Um, at, specifically because uh, my mom was working wardrobe. I got to come to set. You know when when I wasn't shooting. So. Um, and yeah, he's, he's, he's a super awesome dude. And he's, I, to me, he comes off as the guy that's also down for anything. Um, oh, yeah. so it doesn't matter what you wrote for him. He'd be like, I'm down. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. You didn't read the rest of the script? Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. But I'm, whatever it is, I'm in. So what kind of, like, so you said your mom worked on wardrobe. What, what was some of the stuff she was doing? Like we, I, we've not really had anyone on the show ever that's been in like the wardrobe department to my knowledge. So what were some of the duties that your mom got to do? She was mainly background, um, you know, background wardrobe, which gosh, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, even in the gemstones, like they took that so seriously. Everybody in the background was like, so dr- like dressed really, really well. Um, and you know, I haven't gotten to see an awful lot of, you know, how background is handled, um, you know, on many other sets, but I feel like they were handled, you know, way better on this set. Like they were just paid attention to more. It was very important to the whole wardrobe team that not just, you know, the, the main characters looked good. The people in the background that were practically bokeh, you know what I mean? Just blur. Um, yeah. It was important what they looked um, like too. Um, so yeah, it was mainly that. You know, I, I think she would occasionally um, maybe help out with uh, with main cast. I don't remember, um, but she did a little bit of everything. And the stuff that she got to uh, work on was just nuts. Some of it I think was period piece. Some of it wasn't. Um, and I mean, for her, it was kind of a dream come true because it's like some of the stuff she hadn't seen in 20 years and then other stuff. It's like, yeah, these pair of jeans are like $2,500. It's like, Whoa, what? What? Uh, so it was such a, from, from, you know, just talking to her about it. It was a, it was an amazing experience. Again, shout out to mama wild. Not only is she I, raising a fine young man, she could also, you know, identify a $2,500 pair of pants. <laughs> So we can, we, I mean, we were background players on Gemstone. So uh, I can tell you, especially on season two, they, I mean, I would have, I don't know about Noah. Um, I would have three people working on my suit and I'm in the background. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy, man. They, they paid, I mean, they just put so much effort in, into everything. Um, it was mind boggling to see that. Oh yeah. And like, this is crazy too. So I've, I've been on other sets and they, 
This is how particular David and them are. So they want to see everybody and every detail of everybody before they even get on set, right? So when you're done in wardrobe, you have to stand in a long-ass hallway and have multiple pictures of you taken, and then they're sent to David or Jody or Danny, and and then they got to approve your or look. Rand- or Randall, whoever's, um, whoever's really. Randall. I love Randall, man. Love Randall. And if they're if they, like if your pants if they don't like the color of your pants you have to go back to wardrobe and you have to switch your pants. That's right. It, it, it's uh, crazy. Absolutely, but I mean, you know, think about it. It's it's like a big, big puzzle. I mean, if one piece is is not right, I mean, it's it's going to distract you from the overall picture. And I think that's the way that they look at it. You know, they've got the t- they've got the money. So they're like, why not do it? Why not hire people that are so dedicated that you know they're going to make sure everything looks perfect and we did a lot of tiling and I, for anyone out there who doesn't know tiling is when you take like 100 people and you make them look like 20,000 people so you're going to have someone standing next to somebody and then you're going to flip flop them and stuff so you also kind of yeah you got to you got to make sure it looks just right dude i i heard that that was a uh, cuz my mom worked tiling as well uh that was a tedious um yeah. <laughs> process okay so i'm in a lot of the finale scenes when they're saying that coffee black um i hate that song <laughs> because oh, yeah 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 coffee black we, we had to hear that damn song like a thousand times i know i know um and i didn't even know it was danny until uh we watched the show singing um i just figured it was some random song but yeah dude uh i heard my, uh, um and sister both were like, if I hear that song one more time, I'm somebody. That's literally what I said at the end of the week. I was like, if I ever hear that song again, <laughs> I'm just gonna. Even when I watched the show, I started having like, yeah, yeah flash. fast forward. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good song though. It is yeah. a good song. So I'm mad that it got ruined. Yeah, yeah. It's not. I'm the opposite. Like, uh, of course, I mean, I also. Got to be like some with some really fun songs. My favorite, I guess, song was season two during the baptism. Judy's song just about, you know, BJ, like butterflies, butterflies turn yeah. to caterpillars. And like still, like I'm like, that's great. Fifteen more times. Sing me to sleep, you beautiful goddess. Oh love, gosh. I love, could love, bye. I couldn't. I I love the show, but man, uh, stuff gets old for me quick. That cough, black cigarette, that would have killed me. Do wait until you have to do a scene. Well, no, you've already done a fighting scene. Well, I guess you guys didn't have to do a lot of prosthetics in between punches and stuff. So I did a boxing movie where like... You're talking about the black phone now. Yeah, black phone. So um, I did a different film called Enzo where it was was a boxing referee. And I mean, it was like 15 hours of just like having to wait for people to keep coming back and forth into the ring because they had to get a different prosthetic put on. Right. Like a certain blood splatter right here. Like, talk about tedious. Oh, I imagine. No, with Black Phone, it was actually fairly simple. It was just a lot of, uh, just a lot of blood. You know what I mean? We would get the, we would get the main, um, fight done um and then when we got to the close-ups of when mikey you know was just going ham on me on the ground uh there was just one point where they i mean literally just poured blood all over my face <laughs> they i mean and the thing of what what was not so fun about shooting that scene was i had to keep my neck up so I was laying on the ground but i had to keep my neck up and then i had to act like i was you know, getting hit. So, you know, you're just fighting gravity and you're holding your neck up like for an hour straight and yanking your head back. Um, And I had a a pinched nerve in my back at the time. Um, And Mikey at one point, um, you know, was just doing what he was told to do when he put his arm around my, uh, my neck and cranked up. Um, It just killed my back, dude. And uh, times where, um, you know, he was supposed to sort of guide me down, but you know, it was complicated, um, uh, choreography. So, you know, there were times where he, he missed it and I would just fall from my feet to my back, <laughs> you know, and I didn't have anything to, to catch me or anything like that. 
Um, which I'm glad I didn't, you know, it, it would have made the process longer and it didn't hurt that bad to just get it over with. Um, but man, I was sore. I, I might as well have been in a real fight after shooting that dude. Um, it was legitimately like a real fight. Uh, dude. Yeah, man, it turned out great. Uh, seriously. And, uh, I remember Scott coming over and saying, wow, like I, I didn't know what I was getting into when I, when I hired you guys and it meant a lot coming from him. I was like, man, that's it's freaking awesome. No shit. Damn, what a great compliment. Oh, man, it was it was awesome. Mikey, like both of us, just uh, killed it. But we wouldn't have been able to kill it if we didn't have, uh, you know, the, the guys, um, the stunt choreographers, like, helping us out. Like, they were the reason we got that done. Dude, that's what's up. I know we'll switch back to Jim uh, Sons real quick uh, and then kind of wrap it up a little bit. Uh, do you have any good Randall stories? Dude, I'm trying to think, man. Randall is such a I don't even know how to how to describe him in a manner that would that would explain how amazing Randall is. He's so uh, I I remember one time, uh, oh, okay. Oh, dude, I can't really say much about this because it's it's in season 3. Okay. So David came over and uh, he was telling another actor um, to do something, um, inappropriate to herself. Yeah. And I thought David, David didn't specify that he wanted her to do it. He just said the direction out loud. And I was in this scene with this other actor and I thought that meant David wanted me to do that. I, you know, because David just kind of gives you direction and, you know, goes back to, to what he needs to do. And uh, then Randall kind of takes it from there. And, and um, you know, so I didn't get to also too, you know, you want to do what the director says. I would never, you know, not do what I'm asked. Um, <laughs> so I didn't say anything. I just was like, oh, wait, David. Uh, and Randall saw that look of horror on my face and said, oh, hey, David, you, you want this actor to do it to herself, right? And, and David dies laughing because he sees the look on my face and he goes, yes, yes, she would do this to herself. Gavin, you wouldn't do that. And Randall just looks at me and goes, yeah, Gavin, so that would be her doing that to her, not not you. Um, he just saved, like, he just saved the day for me because if Randall wouldn't have said anything, I guess I just would have done it and <laughs> probably, <laughs> yeah, probably been smacked in the face by the other actor and, and, Randall just saved the day. Like Randall saw that look of horror on my face and knew exactly what was going on in my head. And he knows, Randall knows, you know, I, I'm not one to disagree with the director or, or, you know, say, well, you know, I'm willing to do anything. It's my job. I'm getting paid to, to be there to do that. And it's a blessing to do that. Um, so it just meant a lot to me that Randall recognized that and, you know, was, was saved the day. Dude, you um, nailed the Randall impression too. The cadence, you nailed his cadence and the way he talks and everything in your impression just now. Oh, I wasn't even trying, but yeah, dude, good. Dude. I'm glad. Like Randall is, uh, he's awesome. I hope he sees this because he's, uh, and he's also extremely helpful without even asking. Like he he, um, it's almost like he predicts any questions that I might have and he goes ahead and he answers them for me. Um, which just shows like, I don't know if it's, it's how he is just in general, or if he's just been doing this for so long that, you know, he's got it down, but he is such a huge help. I know that, you know, if, if it wasn't for Randall, I would have had so many questions. I'd have been a lot more nervous. Um, I wouldn't have sometimes known, you know, what to do. He does a very good job at, at explaining everything. Um, yeah, shout out to Randall. He's awesome. Shout out to Randall. Same thing with, with when he directs background. That shit is like hurting cats sometimes. Dude, absolutely. And, and he just makes everything very clear, very concise, very easy to understand. Um, and you know, he, he, I don't think I've ever heard him raise his voice. Um, very calm and awesome dude. And when 200 people or 100 people don't do it right the first time, he doesn't beat us up the second no, time. No, not at all. Not no. at all. Randall. Shout out to Randall. Shout out to Randall, man. He's awesome. Love Randall. Damn straight. Uh, what else you got, Nerd Dustin? 
I don't know, man. Gavin, what do you got? To, what do you what do you got coming up soon that you can I, talk? Uh, let, let me think. I have one movie called The Stalker Two. Nice. Uh, that I don't know when it's coming out, but the trailer just dropped. I need to actually share that on my story. You should. Um, that should be coming out pretty soon. I, I would imagine within the next you know few months um, that'll be dropping. Um, I'm going to Texas to see the premiere of the Gemstones. Uh, you know, I don't know when the season will be released, but I know when it is, it's going to be killer. Um, you know, of course, due to the writer's strike, you know, there's not an awful lot of opportunity coming up. So really, you know, what I'll be up to from here on out is just trying to work on my own stuff. Um, you know, we're, we're still pulling for primal taste. We're still, uh, pulling for, you know, Winter Wonder, Zombie F and Apocalypse. I want that to happen. Um, I shot that project. Didn't know my mics were broken. Um, I would get back to editing and have all this feedback, and I would have no idea what was going on. And that happened like three or four times. And eventually I got to the point where I'm like, I just need to reshoot it. Um, so going to do that soon, you know. But me, I just want my stuff to be, you know, darn near perfect. So it, it'll take time, but most of what I'll be doing is, is personal stuff. Hell yeah. Our good buddy and friend of the channel Creed's like, yo, that's the next Stanley Kubrick right there. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's all uh, dude. That's, that's a pretty good compliment, man. That's a real good compliment. Sure. You don't say that shit about us. Oh, that's right. Creed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, so you're joining us from your uh, YouTube channel. Are you active on that channel at all? Not really, man. I want to, you know, I, uh, when, when we get winter wonder zombie, Evan Apocalypse done. Definitely want to put it on there. Same yeah. thing goes for um, maybe not Primal Taste. We're hoping to, you know, put that in a film festival and, and get that picked up. Um, but, you know, might might have some trailers come out there. Um, I definitely want to be more active. Uh, the YouTube, or I'm sorry, not the um, YouTube. I'm so stupid. Uh, the music video, absolutely want to post it on there too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say, you know, give it a, give it a, maybe like a, a month or two, and, and you'll see some activity on here. And you know, we're sh we'll share the shit out of all that stuff for you, brother. I, I appreciate that, man. Dude. And in between now, uh, how can folks find you on social media? Where are you most prevalent? Most prevalent on Instagram. I know I'm not as prevalent as I, I should be. Um, Lord knows I'm reminded of it daily. Like, so many people are so used to, like, other actors and stuff being active. But, like, I feel as if I don't have something worth, you know, while posting – I don't post, I'm not that type of guy that's like, hey, going to the bathroom, you know, like, <laughs> story, hey, Walmart, you know, whatever I post, I feel like it has to be. Uh... Did we lose you? Gavin, you still there? You there, buddy? It's the 67 minute mark. We may have lost Gavin. We may have lost him, y'all. Oh, no. It looks like he's frozen. He didn't get to answer what his favorite scary movie was, but your good buddy said he's going to teach you how to use social media. So we'll cut it there. All right. Yes, Gavin, so. we love you, brother. Thank you so much for being on our live stream. Um, and, you know, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. You're all, you have like an unlimited standing invitation. Yes. To be yeah, on the can, you can always be on the channel. Uh, he ain't coming back. I guess not. I cannot wait for you to see the freeze frame of your face, Gavin, of yes. what your last was. But everyone out there in YouTube land, please, you know, like our channel, subscribe. We have, we love talking to like actors and everyone like that. He's out of here. He'll be back. You can see him on season three of the Righteous Gemstones. We love him so much. Uh, yeah. You know, if you are an actor and you want to be on the show, let us know. I'm also active on Instagram. Hit me up on Instagram, uh, No Escape the Horror, and uh, we'd love to talk to you on the show. We'd love to talk to you on the show. Oh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Castle Ultra. Thanks, thanks Freed. There oh, no. I'm back. Holy shit. That was, that was amazing. We just said the worst shit about you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> shit, okay. Uh, if, if it's anything, I don't know if we could still be friends after, you know. <laughs> I just said, I mean, you know, if it's true, I'll give you that. But no, dude, I'm sorry. My phone just died. But hey, I got back on here pretty quickly. You did. You, you did. did. Everyone's like, he's back. So one of the questions for you um, that someone asks is, what's your favorite scary movie? Oh, man, favorite scary movie? Probably. Um, 
I would say it would have to be one of the Sinister movies. I know I keep bringing that movie up, but I just, like, and, and it sounds so cliche because obviously I worked with Scott, but it's it's really not because of that reason. It's just, like, those movies scared me to death. They're so messed up and just, dude, they're just gruesome. They are. Yeah. What camera are you rocking back there? Oh, Ken, this is the Sony A7R Mark III. Ooh, baby. My baby, dude. I love it. Oh. love it, man. And uh, I remember it's funny. I, I bought a I bought a monitor for it, the Ninja Flame, and definitely an overkill, uh, you know, monitor. But I love it. You know, um, it's got a lot of neat features that, you know, other monitors wouldn't have. But, um, you now know. You're, now you're just bragging. Yeah, I know, I know. Now I'm just now I'm just being mean. You know, I also got this uh, uh, the gimbal too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but who's who's? Uh. Thank y'all for. Oh my God, Angie! You know, my, for being a supporter of of him and our channel. She always shares the stuff where you go on. Thank you for giving birth to him. Okay. Yes, that's, that's that's a that's a compliment right there. It's yeah. mother. It's almost Mother's Day coming up, so that's, if I give y'all like our mothers or have mothers even if they've passed this world into the heavenly beyond thank your mothers just like we thank your mother today absolutely absolutely brother like i said when you cut out and i said all that horrible shit about you <laughs> please don't go back and rewatch it you know <laughs> rewind um no like you always have a standing invitation with us on the channel always thank you man that means a lot dude. I, I, the world I really that you take time out of your day to be on here with us absolutely man i, I love watching i i love talking to you guys and uh you know just getting to share i mean you guys give me a platform to share what i have going on like i like i said you know as far as me posting you know i i don't do it enough and i'm always one to you know like i said i feel like i'm going to post it has to be something super worthwhile um this is just an opportunity to not only catch up with you guys um but to, to share what i've got going on so you know, this is just as helpful to me as it is, you know, to you guys. Shit, yeah. When you're back in Charleston, brother, we'll just be a bunch of little country kids out there misbehaving. That's right, man. I can't wait, dude. Dude, have a great night. Everyone, also have a great night. We'll see you on the next live stream. And once again, hey, if you guys are actors out there, writers, directors, hit us up. We'd love to have you on the show, too. Absolutely. Hey, thank you guys so much. We will Thanks, talk yeah. again, brother. Later, brother. Later, brother. Bye.